Well, hello there. It's been a while. I'm so pleased to announce Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, a sort of prequel and something we've been working on for quite some time. After our last game, we heard from a lot of humans that were a little salty that they couldn't fly up or down. <sighs> what a bunch of bull****. What can I say, though? We're weak. So, there you go. Additional proof that complaining on the internet is super effective. And we're part of the problem. Anyway, if you like loud music, big greasy explosions, ridiculously unrealistic space flight, CD bars, dingy billiards tables, and exceptionally sexy aliens, then this might just be the game you're looking for. Please send $1,000 to Double Damage Games to receive an image of the ship you'd like to eventually buy in our game once we finish designing it, and we'll get you on the list. Nah, I'm just f you. The game will be 30 bucks, and we hope you like it. We've got a bunch of footage coming your way. Don't be a stranger now. Presto Gande. Hey you guys, Tally here from Game Refraction. I'm here with Travis with Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. How are you doing? I'm doing great, how are you? Doing wonderful. So can you tell me a bit about your game? So Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is sort of a space adventure trading combat game with a bit of a role-playing element to it. It's a prequel to a game we made a couple of years ago called Rebel Galaxy, but it plays pretty significantly differently, and uh, we're excited to show it off. Can you tell me anything about it? How did you guys start? Obviously it was a prequel. Did you have the intention of making a prequel for the last game, or did it come up after? Um, initially we didn't have any intend to make a prequel at all. We were actually working on a completely different game. Because we were tired, you know, you ship something and you want to be done with it. But after a few months, we kind of wanted to go back. The last game was like naval combat in space. Like you would take like Assassin's Creed, Black Flag sort of naval combat and do it in sci-fi setting. And this one is very much not. It's more like your traditional space simminess. When we made the original game, there was Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky. And we were kind of worried about doing that kind of game. So we didn't. But eh, now we're doing it. Um, so, the game puts you in a fighter cockpit, there's lots of like super unrealistic World War II style space dogfighting, but then there's also a lot of other side activities and story stuff that we have with it. So you can play billiards for spaceship parts, or uh, play dice poker, there's arcade games, slot machines, lots of other stuff to do. Um, and it's kind of a combination of an open world game and a story based game. So if you want to deviate, you can go and be a space pirate, get on the bad side of the space law, and uh, uh, or you can stick with the main story, uh, which follows the main character, Juno, through to the conclusion. So, this on the screen is Juno. She is kind of like a, like a Lady Han Solo sort of character. Um, used to be a life of crime, got pulled back into it. Um, and our game takes place in a solar system called the Dodge Sector, which is made up of about 40 different solar systems. It's all very American. It's all very steeped in kind of blue collar Americana. You know, um, you took Cowboy Bebop and you mashed it together with like Firefly and a little bit of Sons of Anarchy. That's kind of what it's like. Um, I'm gonna go to a space. Oh, I wanted to find something. To do. I'm just gonna go blow some stuff up because it looks good. Envoy distress. Perfect. Oh wait, no. This one's even better. This is gonna be. This is gonna go really badly. Um, we put a lot of effort into basically trying to make a game like this accessible to people who wouldn't normally be able to play a space sim. There's kind of this persistent problem with space sims where people just can't find where their targets are and they get lost in kind of the six degrees of freedom. So we have something we call auto pursuit where you hold like the left trigger or whatever it is on the control mechanism you're using um, and it makes sure that you can follow things in space. It's kind of like Z targeting in Zelda Ocarina of Time, but for spaceships. So I just want to keep this trigger held, and it'll make sure he stays on the screen. Let's shoot some missiles. There we go. And then I can do a little, um, I can insult them. <laughs> I might draw, draw, their, um, draw their attention away from the things that they're doing, which it just did. He was attacking that little freighter there, that merchant. And now he's not. And I just blew him up. Um, 
kind of going along with that sort of roadhousey vibe, we've got um, about 21 hours of music in subspace, we call subspace radio stations with DJs and commercials. You can add your own custom music if you want, but we license a lot of music. Um, and when you land on these space stations, then you have like various different scenes that you navigate through as Juno. There she is. Um, and you can tune up your ship and buy ship parts and decorate your dashboard with stuff. I've got one of these on mine already. Um, there's various different ships to buy and outfit. So you've got kind of like your high-end military sort of fighters or a big old truck or the garbage truck that you basically start in. Um, one of the things that we do that's really cool is on the PC we have a built-in painting application that's basically Photoshop for painting 3D spaceships <laughs> with uh, layers and custom brushes and a stencil feature so that you can just load any pictures you want and then rub them right off onto your ship. Like that. And then if you really like it, you can then click on buy a physical model and it will open up a website and you can order like a nice 3D printed version with your paint job on it and they will mail it to you. When you're on stations, there'll be a lot of conversations that are story related as you're going through the main narrative. Um, but you can also just head into the greasy space bars and talk to the bartenders and get some tips on things that might be going on in the system that you can go investigate, do a little bit of treasure hunting. So it's got a full conversation system like you would see in kind of like a normal RPG. But you're not gonna hear a thing of in this show floor. And then I just got a little note added to my PDA that will give me some coordinates to check out later for space treasure. I just call everything space stuff now. It's become a thing with me. Um, but then you also have side activities, like I could go and play 8-ball. And you can bet for cash or ship parts. And it's all fully simulated 8-ball. <laughs> I'm not going to make you watch me play 8-ball either. But, but additionally we have things like dice poker, um, slot machines, arcade games. If you get the high score in the arcade game, it opens up a mission game chain, kind of like, uh, uh, boy. Last Starfighter. <laughs> um, there's a space station that you can buy that has been empty for the past hundred years that was supposed to be, be a really great mining opportunity, but it didn't pan out, so an old robot has been trying to sell it on the open market for a hundred years unsuccessfully. <laughs> so you buy it, it's basically nothing but a folding chair and a beer, but he has these really ambitious ideas on the things that you could do to outfit it with services that you can then do. Um, I think that's a general overview of the game. Um, so, space combat side activities, cool radio, tons of music, um, very kind of blue collar roadhouse vibe to everything. Um, our intro cinematic was done by Titmouse. They do the animation for like Korra and uh, Avatar and Metalocalypse and a bunch of other stuff. They were super awesome to work with, but that's the general thing, I think. Well, thank you. Thank you.